Hello, everybody. Hope there's some of you joining me live uh, on today's live stream of uh, the topic around what I'm going to talk about, uh, which is how to create a side hustle uh, when you're still working in a corporate job. So if you're here joining me live, um, please uh, write me a comment and tell me a little bit about where you, uh, well, where you're from and are you currently working on a side hustle or figuring out what your side hustle should be. Okay, so if you're joining me live, please uh, let me know you're here. And uh, I'm currently working from my home, um, so you might actually hear uh, a few roosters today. And, and I've had to chase actually two chickens out of my house today. Uh, <laughs> they were like totally cock-a-doodling uh, while I was trying to do my test stream earlier on. So hopefully they don't come back, but I'm sure you hear them in the background and sometimes they're kind of hanging out in the garden. Uh, so yeah, so thanks for joining me and uh, please uh, comment, ask me your questions underneath the video. Um, and make sure that while I'm speaking, you can ask me questions around things that I'll be talking about. But I would love to know where you're from, uh, what you're currently doing for work, and what you hope your site hustle is to be. Or perhaps you already started something on the side, but not sure how to keep focused uh, and accountable on it. Um, either way, I want to know and I want to help you uh, with uh, bringing more focus and productivity um, and dedication, really committing to working uh, with something on the side so that when it's time for you to quit, you have something uh, launched. You have something that you're confident to go into um, before you quit your job, right? We don't, we're not all risk takers where we can just quit and then hope for the best. Most of us need to build the confidence that we need to be able to quit our job. So we can um, set aside time and set aside a focus to work on these things even if we're still in a corporate job. So um, just to give you a little background about me, um, so I'm, I'm basically the escape coach at Screw the Cubicle, but my journey really started where you are as well, where I was working a really high level corporate job that required me to travel, travel quite a lot uh, around the world. Uh, and it didn't give me a lot of time, to be honest, to work on something on the side. So I would have to be really um, productive in the way that I, I scheduled off time to work on my own thing. Because if when I wasn't doing that, you know, more and more time would go by. Um, and before you know it, another year goes by and I still didn't fulfill um, the goals of, of quitting that I said I wanted to do like two, three years ago. So what I had to do was really, first of all, um, commit to this decision that this side hustle or this, this um, part-time you know, creation of a business on the side is as important to me as my regular job. So that means that you have to treat your side hustles like, it, like you're going to the gym or like how important your family is to you or going to work, right? We go to work every single day without questions asked. So you have to show up for your uh, side hustle or your business or your dreams in the same sort of attitude. Because if you don't take it seriously and you don't really have this full choice and decision that you really make on from the get-go, that this, no matter what, you're going to do this and you're willing to exchange other things in order to do this, then you'll never do it, okay? Just like everything else. So it's like training for a marathon, right? Or a triathlon, like you got to practice and do lots of things before you get on to the race, the race day. So you're really preparing for this exit day, right? For you to quit your job. So it requires your commitment and dedication to it. So when I uh, was in my corporate job, I was working anywhere between sometimes 60 to 80 hours a week. So that created a bit of pressure for me to um, be, be more mindful around time management. So some of the ways that I've done this is really be dedicating just what I believe I can dedicate, not over exerting myself until I'm exhausted because you don't want to do that. It'll deplete you with your energy and then you won't want to work on a side hustle uh, when you get home from work. So sometimes it's about just one day a week for even one hour a week. Uh, if, if you can commit to that consistently, you can start to kind of um, upgrade those hours when you feel a bit more comfortable working on something. So Sundays, for example, were my day uh, to work on my own stuff, right? My my day to actually work on on research, work on testing my ideas, uh, work on um, getting getting mentorship and coaching and reading uh, around how I wanted to launch a business because at the time I knew nothing about business, right? Just like some of you might be, like you need to learn a lot of things, right, to launch a business, to even learn about what you want to offer. So it takes time uh, to really find those answers. So you need to be able to dedicate uh, a consistent time every week for it. So I would time block Sundays from three to four o'clock. I would go to the same coffee shop or the same library spot and make it this ritual. 
right? So I'm not doing it from home, sitting on my bed. I'm actually going to a place and feeling like this is the time that I sit down and it's focused on me, nothing else, no other distraction, right? Trying to build a side hustle when you're still, in, uh, when you're in, uh, in the hours of work won't work very well because you'll be distracted. So really pick a day that you're not distracted by your full-time job uh, or family or whatever else that you have in your day. Okay, so um, I was doing, uh, uh, while I was in my full-time job, I was, I was building my business on the side, but I also took on a weekend job because I knew that I wanted to quit faster uh, than I anticipated. So I had to work um, at an old bar I used to work in back in university just to make some side money so that I could be saving up more money. Uh, I could be banking in uh, more of a cushion plan for myself for when I quit. So six months uh, was the kind of um, ballpark for me to feel comfortable, six months of my living expenses saved up for before I took my final my final leap uh, and it took me nine months to do that right um, but it was dedicated of nine months in order for that to happen so what are some sort of side hustles uh, I'm talking about today so some some side hustles have to do with um, particular skill sets or particular business ideas that you currently have in mind and you're not sure if it's gonna work right we all don't so we need to test them out so I like to use the time that I spent in my corporate job, and I tell this to all my clients as well, use that time where you have a bit of a safety zone, where you're still protected by a full-time uh, career, to work on um, experimenting with things that you say that are possible business ideas. So you might be multi-passionate like I am, where I'm good at like multiple things, and it was really hard for me also to kind of determine which business was the first business I should start. And Screw the Cubicle was actually not my first business, it was my second. So the first business I had to start was something a little bit more closer to, the, to my experience in that time, but something that I could still feel good doing on my own, right? So you may have uh, one idea that's related to your current career that you felt, hey, you know what? I can do this on my own. I just need to find clients. I just need to get more confident in being able to do this without being under the umbrella of my, cor of my corporation. So you might be thinking about freelancing your skills, for example. So you don't need to have a website up like, you know, when you do this, I always recommend don't spend all this money on shiny objects like websites and branding and logos and colors and font and, you know, all those things look really pretty. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, the most important thing for you is to get confident in knowing that the, the, the work that you've decided to do or the business that you want to build is truly the type of work that you enjoy. And the only way to know this before spending an investment on it or, or, or putting your time and effort into it is to test out your skills. So if you're someone that uh, believe that, hey, you might want to do website design for a living or you're a great project manager and you want to help um, women entrepreneurs take more of their time back uh, with their business and, and you think that you can do it, right? You've done it before in, in your corporate job, but now you want to do it for yourself. Well, you want to test out that, that you want to do this still after you quit uh, and you still enjoy it and perhaps experiment with uh, who your ideal client is, right? Who are the people that you truly want to help? You might have an inclination, for example, like women, right? Or women business owners, or you want to work with authors and do copywriting for them, whatever, right, is your idea. You want to start searching out for these people um, without having a website first to offer your help, offer your services. And I like to start with going with kind of your low hanging fruit, right? People you already know, people who know of your talent, um, people in your community. So if you're, you belong to Facebook groups or you belong to, um, you know, uh, places in Quora or Twitter, wherever you hang out, these are the places to start kind of requesting uh, for support to, to kind of get what I call beta testers, right? You want to be able to get a couple guinea pigs under your belt and you can offer your help for free. You can offer your help for a small exchange of money. It could be an exchange of testimonial. Um, whatever it is, figure out, uh, you just want to get yourself in this kind of like experimental lab, okay, and treat this whole thing as a test. So think about the people that require your skill sets. Like, so if you already know the type of work that you want to do, how can you touch base with people that are already on your Facebook, already part of your family, part of your friends list to say, hey guys, I'm actually going to be freelancing my skills now. I'm taking on, you know, three test clients. It's going to be at this really low rate or even for free uh, in exchange for a testimonial when my site la launches, right? And people are usually really open to getting, uh, you know, value, especially someone that's a professional like you, uh, where, you know, you've already done this for a living, right? So why would they, they're getting a great deal, right? Getting your time in the beginning of your startup uh, to be able to use your services and just exchange testimonial or review or give you feedback, right? And you can use 
that feedback, that time that you spend with these test clients, for example, uh, to, to verify your process, right? To figure out what you liked and what you didn't like doing. Um, to get you a little bit more niche down in terms of your services or your products that you offer, right? So when you decide to then spend money on a website and spend money on launching a business, you're a little bit clearer on exactly what your ideal market wants. Uh, you're clear on what type of work uh, you enjoy doing and how you want to do it. And then when you launch, you have testimonials, you have reviews, you've got um, credibility, right? Which is what we want when we first launch a business um, because that's what people want to see on a website. So that's why, why side hustles are also really, really important. Um, and personally for you, it's a confidence builder, right? So a lot of people come to me and they always say, you know, I've been working in this industry for 10, 15, 20 years, whatever it is, but I'm still shaking in my boots every time I think about creating a business, you know, uh, from the skill set. And that's because they haven't done it for themselves before. So they have this sort of confidence, um, uh, self-esteem, fear issue around that, well, no one's going to buy me unless I'm working for someone else, right? And going under the umbrella of my old company. That's not true. You know, lots of people buy services. They buy support and help online. I mean, uh, I've been alive in my business for the last four years because people have found me online. I do all my work from where I am right now in Bali, right? Working with global people. So this is the time, you know, to really put your skill sets into the, the online world and, and be more flexible in the choices that you can make of location, of your time, and, and, and really who you want to target, right? Um, so if confidence is your issue around launching a business or becoming a freelancer, well, I need you to really commit to testing your skills. And if going after people you know is uncomfortable to you, you just don't want to deal with kind of like, you don't want to, um, what do they say, like shit where you eat, you know, that sort of thing. You don't want to make it so personal. Um, you can go to sites like freelancer.com or upwork.com and start a profile. Right? You don't need a website, you just need a profile uh, that tells people the level of skills you have, what you help with, and you can market yourself in um, uh, job, uh, site, uh, websites like that in order to uh, get clients, right? Get some test clients uh, under your belt uh, in ensuring that you like what you do, okay? Um, so sometimes your side hustles may not actually be the, the work itself. Uh, it might also be including um, you know, building content for the business that you might launch in three, six months, or even a year from today. So a lot of times when you want to play online, uh, what really matters is people can find you, right? So why not use um, some, some, you know, while you're still in your full-time job, use the time now to start building your audience, to start building your, um, your content to attract people to your type of work, right? So that may be as simple as starting a really simple one-page blog. Right. You don't have to have any offers on it. You don't even have to have um, here's what I do and what I sell. You can just simply be talking and writing uh, or filming videos around the topics that you believe your business will be in or your career will be in. So what are stuff you like talking about? What is your work? Uh, you know, what are some of the topics that surround your work? Who are the people that need your help? And what types of problems do they have that you can talk on a blog about, right? You can offer some solutions without selling them anything to begin with. And so as you build this blog while you're still in your full-time job, you're going to start to get confident in the way that you say things, right? You're going to get confident in what people want. Um, you're going to start to... Um, develop a bit more of a knack around what content matters to the people you want to help in the future and start building your list, right? So if people love reading your blogs. You can go from blogs to offering them a freebie or a lead magnet that we call it in the industry uh, and give stuff away of, of value, right? And start building your email list before you quit your job so that when you do quit your job, you've got a good list to play with and sell things to, right? And have a nurtured community that already knows what you do, already has warmed up to uh, all the things that you help with in your career, okay? So that's another great reason of why starting a side hustle now instead of after you quit is, is a really, really good idea. Um, so when, as I started this kind of video, um, you know, if you guys have any questions, please put in the, the comment box about your specific situation, uh, about creating a side hustle. If you don't know what your side hustle should be or if you have a side hustle but you're not um, committing to it, like what advice I might give you. So, you know, obviously, Put it on the comment box so I can help answer the questions for you, uh, and then that way uh, it can be more personalized to you. 
Um, but the last thing I want to talk about is um, making this priority. So I started this video saying that the first thing about side hustles and actually committing to dreams of quitting in the first place, honestly, takes this whole serious stance around that this is a non-negotiable thing uh, that is part of your life now, right? It's not a, I'll do it when I have more time or I'll do it when the kids uh, stop bragging on me, <laughs> you know, or I'll do it when I make more money at my corporate job and can quit because that, you know, what if or when, when you might do it situation uh, may not come for a while and you have to work your way up. You have to ease your way into the courage of quitting. It isn't an overnight thing. It takes um, this consistency of focus and attention and learning uh, new things. And so that means that you have to, to make it a project, right? You have to make it almost like a job for yourself, you know, in order to um, show up for it every single week. So like I said, if you show up for your job every single week, every single day, you need to show up for your ideas, your business, your dreams, uh, your your um, projects that, you, that you've been, you know, putting in the back burner, just as importantly as all these other things that you take into account for your life. Um, so I mentioned in the beginning of the video about time blocking. So um, pick a day, pick a, 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 a spurt of hours, right? Sundays, 3 to 5 p.m. every single week, I'm going to dedicate to this, right? And, and really go somewhere different. Don't, don't work from home if, if that's a place of distraction. Go to a co-working space, right? Go to a library. Go to a nice cafe and make it like an event for you every week that this is, oh, this is for me. This is a time I dedicate to uh, learn uh, and put in the time to be able to grow. Right. A lot of people that come to me, uh, you know, when they coach with me, they're always like, Lydia, can I just quit in three months? Is this possible? And I said, yeah, it is possible if you are going to dedicate uh, like full time hours to this. But if you're working a full time job, you have to be realistic. And, and like I said, ease your way into um, being committed uh, to doing this in a much more full time way. Right. So so when you think about. Um, you climbing the corporate ladder, right? Like whatever position you're in in your job right now, that took some time, right? To kind of go through, learn new things, to be able to be promoted, right? You had to learn uh, how to upskill, right? You have to learn new ways of working uh, in order to get recognized, right? At your work to be promoted. Well, the same really goes for business building, right? It just doesn't happen overnight. You need to kind of dedicate, um, you know, time to get help. You need to dedicate time to get mentorship in order to have your side hustle become a full-time gig for you, right? Right? But starting it off in very bite-sized experimentations, bite-sized projects will make it a lot easier for you to then start um, asking and charging people for money. Right. So if a hard thing for you to do in the beginning is charging people for what you do because you've never done that before, um, even though the limiting belief is that if you've been paid to do it, you know, uh, with your past employer, you'll be paid to do it with somebody else. Right. But if you want to get over that fear um, in a much gentler way than just like plunging into it and start asking for full rates, again these bite-sized path, right? Offer your services for free for three people. Get the testimonial, get the feedback, refine your process of your work. Then offer it for an introductory price, right? Then offer it um, then at a, at, at a mid-range, right? Whatever it is to kind of ease yourself into um, really charging what you're worth, right? So you, you, you charge what you're worth depending on where you're at, right? When your confidence grows, when your uh, confidence in that, hey, I've dealt with 10 people uh, in the last few months and all of them are happy, well, you're going to be able to charge the next guy really easily because you know it works. You know that people are happy. Uh, you know exactly what to expect when you take on a new client, right? Uh, so that's, that's a re really great benefit of starting a side hustle early. So um, I want to hear from you um, around what is your side hustle idea? Uh, what may you be struggling with when it comes to delivering your side hustle when you're still in a full-time job? Is it a time management issue? Um, is it, you know... Uh, not knowing what your side hustle should be? Do you have way too many ideas and have no idea uh, what, to, what to start with? Um, and a lot of times, you know, when I think of too many ideas, and I had this issue as well, is that you may want to validate every idea. Um, so if you have three, two, three, four ideas, you want to pick the strongest ones, obviously, that encompasses like your strengths, your skills, and your, your that you're actually drawn to do, right? Something that's going to be fun for you to do, uh, something that's actually going to be, um, you know, really, really easy for you to do because you know how to do it. So don't pick a project that you're like just been experimenting about in the last few months and thinking that'll be fun. But, you know, your best side hustle, your bet, best business ideas at times are things that you've already done before right? Aspects of skills that you've already performed and have seen results for, because that way your confidence is just so much better when you launch a business or launch a freelance career, 
right? So if you still want to test out a few ideas after kind of have a rating system and kind of figuring out which ideas have more legs, right, more feasibility for you to start, um, you can kind of dedicate like a month at a time or a few weeks at a time to focus on one idea, right? Don't dibble and dabble into multiple places. Um, dabble into that one idea um, and start to go and get test clients, right? Go out there and tell people, here's what you can help with and offer your help, test it out, and then check in with yourself after that experimental uh, stage or time has passed and, and go, is this something I want to pursue? Is this something that feels like it's joyful to me? Can, do I feel that I can talk you know, every single day about this and I want to help the people that I said I want to help. Sometimes you might find that when you take on test clients, you're like, oh, it's not really what I want to do anymore. Um, yeah, okay, back to the, the drawing board. But that's okay because part of this whole thing around experimentation is that you're never wrong. Right? You're never going to fail because this whole thing is a test subject. You don't have to commit to anything yet, but you can experiment to get to clearer answers, more confidence in knowing what idea is meant for you. Okay, um, so that's it for me today around side hustles and what to create for your side hustle, uh, why it's important to create your side hustle and how to treat it uh, with commitment and dedication so that you actually do it almost like a second job, right? Almost like a project that is non-negotiable for your life in order for you to quit. It takes time, it takes consistency uh, and uh, I want to help support you in this. So uh, if I'm, when I'm done the live stream, you have any other questions and you, or you come on the stream a bit later, feel free to comment under this uh, video stream and I'm happy to answer it after the live stream has ended. Okay. And another announcement I want to make for you guys also is in the last couple of months, I've been working on a really special project for some of you because I've been getting a lot of requests uh, from people that tell me that they want to work with me, uh, but they are not yet ready to start a business, but they do need help with this transition process around fears, around what type of skills they even have, around uh, preparation to transition uh, from being a full-time employee uh, to creating uh, an environment uh, and a state of mind to make them ready to quit their job. So this sort of transition phase. Uh, so in the last few months, I've been working on uh, a program called the 30-Day uh, Roadmap Program, which is called Take the Leap. So it's specifically uh, eight lessons that are curated uh, for people, and my own experience, including my clients, of the most common things that you have to get clear on and, and act on in order for you to feel prepared to quit. So some of the topics that's covered in the program are things around getting your finance finances in order, uh, making sure that your, your relationships in your life know about your dreams and how they can support you in this transition. It also uh, helps you work on things like your side hustle that we spoke about today, figuring out what are your skills, what are the things that you're best at doing that you can experiment with so that you're not um, constantly confused about what to do for a business or what to do for a freelance career. So it's going to walk you through a, 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 a segment that's basically called how to create your own job, right? So part of that will be part of the program uh, and also talk about productivity it will help you create action every single week to work on uh, quitting your job in bite-sized actions every week uh, there'll be three minute videos for me every week and an action so that in 30 days you are much more prepared than ever before to quit your job and know that you're not you're not going to be worried about money uh, worry about you know failing because you're going to prepare for it you're going to prepare for all these things to um, to build the confidence that you need in order to quit your job okay so that uh, program I'm going to put a link on there but you can go to um, basically screw the cubicle.com forward slash take dash the dash leap. Okay. Or bit.ly dot, uh, uh, bit .ly forward slash STC take the leap. And you can find the program there. Uh, it's going to go uh, live and launch on July 1st. But right now I have a special going on just for, for my community, uh, which is basically a 50% off uh, offer. So you can get the whole program for literally $47, which is a steal. Okay, so 97 is already um, an awesome price, uh, but 47 is like the biggest jumpstart that, and the, the most affordable jumpstart you can get to really get uh, those eight videos and eight steps of how you can transition from um, a career and job that doesn't fulfill you uh, to creating, preparing for a life uh, and what you have to prepare for to be able to create a career of your own. Okay, so let me know if you have any questions about that below the chat box, and I'll be happy to answer that for you. Uh, thank you for joining me for this short stream, and I hope that was helpful for you to um, uh, start creating your side hustle, start brainstorming ideas about what your side hustle will be, and start committing and taking your uh, dreams to create a, a business or a freelance career out of the cubicle uh, in, in priority and non-negotiable. Okay, thanks for joining me again, and I will talk to you later on our next stream. Bye.